Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Positive Power of Pain. So today I'd like to give a little bit of background as to why I'm calling this podcast The Positive Power of Pain. Because if you've ever been in pain, you might be thinking it really wasn't a very positive experience. And I'm fully aware and I'd like to get this straight to begin with. Not all pain is positive. And in my history, in my personal history, I have many stories of many negative and very difficult things that have happened to me that have brought me pain. I've also worked with clients, hundreds of clients over the years who've come to me with their pain. But one thing that I'm fully aware of is that a lot of our pain is the voice inside us telling us what we need to do to make positive changes to our lives. So whether it's the way you move when you're doing something, the way you respond to a situation or anything else that maybe creates pain in your life, I believe having reached my 50th year this year, that there is a positive power in your pain. And it really is just a question of harnessing that and seeing how you can maybe help to change your level of pain, which then creates positivity in your life and sometimes allows for new things to come into your world, which you literally could never have dreamed would be possible. So the first thing that I want to get clear is what is my definition of of pain that is positive compared to pain that is negative? Well, looking at my own life and that of my clients, so many people walk into my clinic and we always quantify their pain. So we measure it. So we measure their pain out of 10. So if you have a pain condition today, where would you put that level of pain? Is it one out of 10, five out of 10, 10 out of 10? It's very likely that if you were in pain, that was a 10 out of 10 level, you would not be listening to this today because you would probably be doing something either in a room, in a dark room, hiding away from the world, or so out of it on medication that you wouldn't be able to process anything I'm saying right now. So what I'm saying here is that actually 10 out of 10, I don't believe is pain. 10 out of 10 is trauma. It's chronic trauma. And physical pain can be trauma. Emotional pain can be trauma. And sometimes emotional pain leads to physical pain and physical pain leads to emotional pain. So the pain levels that I'm thinking about when we're going to be looking at all different subjects around pain in this podcast is really the levels of pain from one to seven, because I believe each level of pain from one to seven has a positive message. It is your body communicating with you. It's your body Uh, suggesting that there may be a problem. It's your body telling you there is definitely a problem. And it's your body screaming at you to do something about that problem. And if you don't do that within the pain levels of one to seven, I believe it then can move in to pain levels eight to 10, which are trauma. And even though in in hindsight, you may at points in your life look back at traumatic episodes and say, actually, I can see the positive in that. I believe when you're actually in those experiences, it's very difficult to harness in the moment the positivity of what you're going through. However, pain levels one to seven, I believe, give you scope to continuously um, change change and transform your behaviors and your movements. So for example, if you were to come to me and you have chronic back pain and you were to scale it out of 10, and so let's say Mick, Mick came to me, he had a back problem. When he first spoke to me, his problem was probably it had been eight to 10. And he, by the time he contacted me, 
was anesthetizing the pain, but had realized having gone through all the doctors, he'd had surgery, he'd had loads of medical intervention. He'd also been told he'd probably need to continuously take medication for pain relief. So when he came to me, he was in a state of trauma. And my first job was to try and bring him into manageable pain levels. So I was able to, uh, to talk to Mick about his pain. I understand referred pain. I understand how pain can be in one part of the body, but show up in another part of the body. Pain is very com complex the way it shows up in the body. But what we did was we pe mix pain was giving him clear messages. Okay. And this is where I would say your pain is positive. So as a practitioner, I'm able to look at someone's body and I'm able to assess them. I'm able to look at how they can move different parts of their body. So for example, with Mick, it was his pelvis. So it was something where I could say, okay, Mick, can you move your pelvis backwards and forwards? Which bit hurts most when it moves forwards or backwards? Mick was able to tell me. And so the positive power of his pain was that already it was giving him the correct messages that I could zone in and start to understand which muscle groups and which joints in his body were having problems or not moving correctly. It was then, okay, mate, do you have more weight going down one leg than the other leg? Now, all the time, his body was giving him the answers and as it gave him the answers, his pain levels going up and down, his body was speaking to me through his levels of pain. So it's a very curious thing because you might think, well, poor Mick, you know, uh, the fact he was in pain at all, it's just such a tragedy. Well, pain is part of life. We all know this. We all uh, dealing with pain levels in every area of our lives most most days it might be a conflict in a relationship it might be uh, when you're sitting at your desk in a particular position and your shoulder hurts it could be anything that's causing you pain stress trying to um, deal with too many things at once causes you pain but all the time this pain is giving you a message. It's you talking to you. So I see this as very, very positive because if you can learn to connect with these messages that your pain levels are giving you, then you are connecting with the inner guidance um, system or the GPS of who and how you are on a minute to minute, day by day, basis. And if you learn to listen to those messages, you have the capacity to change things in your life and keep yourself safe and keep yourself from reaching the levels of eight to 10, which are trauma. Now, of course, we all have things happen in our lives which come in at an eight to 10. They do. It's a reality. It could be because of something someone else does. It could be because you crash your car. It could be because something's happened to your child. Whatever it is, eight to 10 does happen. But the more that you can build your relationship with your pain levels of one to seven, the more you will have the capacity to deal with pain levels eight to 10 when they come and knock you over the head. And that is going to happen. That's going to be part of your life and your life experiences and of those around you. But the positive power of pain is real. I know it for myself. I can assure you I'm not sitting here today because I just have an interest in pain. I'm sitting here today because my life, I believe, has been pretty much from first things I can remember, has been a series of traumatic episodes that have not just shocked me at the time and left me with aftershock, but they've weakened my body in various ways, 
they weakened they at points weakened my immune system they weakened my capacity to communicate with people they weakened my capacity to feel safe in the world and all of these traumatic events meant that i had patterns of pain like a blueprint into my body from almost before i could speak i also believe that a lot of these patterns are not just about what happened around me, but they even relate. And if you look at epigenetics, and we'll, we'll talk about that in other podcasts, but if, if you look at what you inherit in the cells that make you, you are potentially, or you, you are already inheriting pain before you've even taken your first breath out of the womb. So all of these patterns of pain are just waiting to be triggered. And they are powerful. They are powerful. They can be running your subconscious. They can be making you behave in ways where you know you're doing something stupid. You know you keep repeating a habit. You know you're stuck in an addiction. You know you're in an unhealthy relationship, but you literally do not know how to leave or how to do something differently. So when we start to scale these behaviors or these experiences through the pain level, we can start to understand how much of a grip do they have on us. And very often that grip they have on us is because I believe of pain that we've inherited or we've absorbed from other people as well as experiences we've had ourselves. So the positive power of pain is about bringing some light to this darkness, because if we have levels of pain or pain habits or stress habits or movement habits that we're not even aware of, then how do we begin to resolve them? Well, I believe from my own experience that I have had to travel sideways, backwards, forwards in terms of experiences and sensations that I have that my body gives me messages of when I give my body permission to feel. And it's very simple to harness the positive power of pain if you give your permission, self-permission to feel the pain. However, if you have lived your life, as I did for a long time, believing that if I felt pain, I either had to pretend it wasn't there or I had to just live with it and function anyway, or I needed to take medication for it, to suppress it. And I'm not saying that medication isn't appropriate for you. It may be. But at times for me, I personally have re reacted quite badly to, to that and it's caused me more pain. That's me. It's not you. <laughs> this isn't about telling anyone what to do around anything medical. Also, um, I have been and I believe I was for a long time an addict and I used drugs, soft drugs to self-medicate, to try and suppress the pain, to try and live with the pain. So everything was about trying not to feel my pain. And all that happened was I found myself in more pain, needing to up the level of what I was doing to try and numb. Numb, numb the pain. I needed to continuously hold into the pain. I had to keep secrets about things that caused me pain. And everything was about holding in the negativity and the negative power of my pain. And all this continued to do was give me more of the same, more negative pain. When I was 25, my father committed suicide, and this was the third suicide in my family. So I learned by the time I was 25 that actually something wasn't working in my family. Something was coming down through the generations, and I was the next generation. And the pain that my father and his parents had experienced was something that had affected me. So I began to wonder, how am I going to not do what they've done? 
<clears throat> I know for sure that my father did many things to try and deal with his pain, but none of it worked. But what I noticed was my father's way of dealing with his pain was to go and talk about his pain. He wrote about his pain. He wrote a book about his experience of his pain. He, he, he took medication for his pain, but nothing sorted it out. And when I was about 25, 26, after my father's suicide, I went off to India to run away because I thought geographically, if I left, maybe I wouldn't feel the pain. That doesn't work. The pain goes with you wherever you go. And I smoked as many drugs as I could to numb out the pain until my throat was so raw that I couldn't smoke anymore. Then I needed to take medication to try and deal with the chronic sore throat from smoking so much. That medication made me feel even worse. So the pain was just escalating, escalating. And I was actually in Dharamsala, which is where the Dalai Lama lives. And um, it was one of those thunder and lightning moments. It was literally thunder and lightning. I couldn't smoke, so I couldn't numb out the pain I was feeling with that. I couldn't uh, take the medication because it was making me feel so awful. And I was literally on my knees in tears in a country like India on my own. And it was that moment of God, please show me God, spirit, higher power, whatever it is, the tree growing in the ground, something somewhere, please show me. How do I stay alive? And not just stay alive, but enjoy my life. I believe that was the turning point that rock bottom of addiction, of using medication, of even being in a spiritual place. India for me was very much about a journey. Um, the Dharamsala was about that connection with spirit. It, it was all, it was all there, but nothing was, was doing the job. And at that point, something in me just said, you need to go inside. You need to start the journey. The journey of rather than running away from the pain, rather than trying not to feel the pain, it's time to go in and connect. And as I sat there for the next few days, barely able to smoke my joints and um, cannabis, desperately trying not to take the medication, I found Tibetan doctors. And I began to learn from Tibetan doctors that they, their, me, their medicine is actually nutrition. So their medicine is beautiful. They take it and, and they have rituals around the time when they take it. And it's actually, they, they almost look like rabbit droppings of the Tibetan medicine, but they are made of herbs and minerals and all kinds of things. And I, I spoke to this Tibetan doctor, I was a complete wreck. And the Tibetan doctor began to look at certain parts of my history, my physical history, my emotional history, and prescribed me these beautiful things that looked like rabbit droppings. They tasted disgusting, but she said, she was saying to me, you take this, then you take this, then you, you say this when you take that and you do this when you take that and you take this on the night of the full moon. It was, it was something that was so new to me, but it was all about starting to connect with my pain and do something slightly different. What I realized a few years later was that this Tibetan medicine was actually full of minerals. And I had had a history, I, I, I'm celiac, and I had had a history of completely not being able to absorb um, and, and being very ill in my late teenage years. And even though I got my strength back once I was diagnosed, I realized it wasn't until I started taking the Tibetan medicine that I got my power back. At this point, when I was in India, and I was under the, the um, wonderful um, 
knowledge and support of these Tibetan doctors, my health began to thrive. I began to get well. I began to feel different. And the stronger I got in myself, the more I could begin to connect with pain that I was still feeling because I was actually stronger in the first place to be able to connect with it and feel it. Now, that is 25 years ago. And a lot has happened since then. And a lot happened before then that has created why I now see a real positive power in pain. It was my pain that day that got me on my knees. It was pain that couldn't be buried, that couldn't be suppressed, that couldn't be healed with pills. It could be suppressed. It could be medicated. Uh, but the cause of it was never going to be dealt with. Over the last 25 years, I personally have had a lot of experiences that some of them have been very challenging and some of them have been incredible. Through the last 25 years, I have needed to process why three suicides happened within my first 25 years around me. I've had to look at the pain. I've had to feel into how the behaviors of those people who were suffering their pain impacted my life. So a lot of that pain was inherited. It wasn't even actually my pain, but it became my pain. And it was a really positive distinction for me when I could start to understand, ah, oh, okay, so this pain I'm feeling is actually in me because I've been impacted and affected by someone else's pain. Now, when you can start to do that, you can begin to think about what is yours and what, what, what have you absorbed. And different things trigger on different days. Have you ever been feeling absolutely great and then you've witnessed something or heard something and it's triggered you into your pain? So when that happens, that's a voice inside you triggering and lighting up something in you that is unresolved. And if that's unresolved and it's in you, what I have learned is you are likely to keep getting that triggered and attract more of the same pain until you can go in and you can connect with that place of pain, feel into it, breathe into it, and possibly need to do a process that releases that pain. Those trigger moments, even though they may feel like the darkest night at times, they can be the most positive things that help you nav navigate unconscious pain that's lying dormant within you that can be triggered at any time. And why is this important? Well, what I've seen in my own body and in other people, um, in many of my clients over the years, is that if you have dormant pain that you've suppressed and it can get that easily triggered by seeing something or watching something on TV and you feel that sudden surge. And sometimes our pain is just that we feel so sorry for someone else. But sometimes, and I know you know this experience, sometimes something triggers you because of something that's happened to you. Well, that is lying dormant. And actually, that can become dis-ease, it can, it can become a systematic disease, it could become a headache, it could become a digestive order because you're holding that somewhere within you. And it can also become a chronic pain condition. So many people come to me, they might have a back problem or a shoulder problem or a neck problem. And unless there's been a specific movement pattern that they're doing or an injury that, that's very clear, very often that chronic pain condition is because actually their subconscious and unconscious is very, very busy holding in painful experiences, painful memories. And different experiences of pain tend to shoot to different areas of the body. So if you're doing too much or you feel like you need to do too much or you can't cope with what you need to do, 
very often I see that, sh uh, that showing up in someone's shoulder. Okay, so the positive message of that shoulder pain is immediately telling me that they might be doing too much. And I'm asking them, do you feel like you're having to shoulder too much at the moment? You know, have you got too much on your shoulders? Or if someone's coming in with the back, well, we only have one spine. Uh, uh, the base of our, our spine supports all of our upper body. And very often when I see a client who comes in with lower back pain, it's something where I, I have to ask them, you know, do you feel supported enough at the moment? Or do you feel like you're needing to support people too much at the moment? That, that saying, the straw that broke the, the camel's back, exists for a very good reason. And I'm sure you've had a moment of where you may have felt just one thing too many came in. And is back pain something you've ever experienced that if you stood back and listened to the voice of your pain, you listen to the positive power of that voice of your pain? Is there something going on outside of you that you that could connect with that? So your body is giving you messages all of the time. And as within, so without. So very often what is going to manifest in your external world is also being held in your internal body. So I believe the level of your pain is also an indicator of how serious that is and how seriously you need to stop reflect and really think about what you're doing and how you're doing it. So pain level one to me is just a niggle. It's like your friendly, uh, your, your little friend, just pointing something out, uh, just, just giving you a little warning, uh, telling you to keep an eye on it, but not to worry about it. Pain level two is a little bit like Mm, I just want to remind you this is happening and you may want to just keep an eye on it. Pain level three, mm, this is happening. So if this was your back, uh, this is happening. You might want to just have a little bit of a rest, get down on the floor, uh, give yourself a, a little bit of a break. Uh, if you don't do that, it could get a bit more serious. Pain level four, okay this is going to be a problem. It's really going to be a problem. If you don't do something now, I'm trying to uh, handle it, but you're going to need to do something. You're going to need to change something. Pain level five. Okay. It's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, can you please uh, take action right now? Cause it's getting worse. Okay. Pain level five is it's a problem and it's getting worse. Pain level six is it's got worse. It's got worse. Stop now. Stop everything now. Get some support. Get some outside help if you need to. Put something in place. We're nearly at pain level seven. We're nearly at pain level seven. Pain level seven is, okay, in terms of the brain and the body and the nervous system, this is as much as I can tolerate. This is much as I can tolerate without this pain uh, that you're in right now, uh, having the power to trigger other pain, more pain. It might be uh, if you've got back pain, this pain is going to is now needing to be medicated. The medication might affect your digestion. Uh, the, the affecting your digestion is going to affect your ability to absorb food. Your ability to not absorb food is going to create all kinds of lethargy and other problems. So by pain level seven, you're having to take action. And this action is going to create more but different types of pain. Pain levels eight to 10, they're trauma. We're not going into them today. So the positive power of your pain is that every single level of your pain is like a mastermind of different versions of you that are there to support you. And they have a voice. And you can either suppress this voice or all those voices and go, I'll listen to you another day or just shut up. Or you can listen to it. And what I love is when in my history, I've listened to that voice 
or when with my clients, they come to me and they listen to those voices. You start to navigate your life. You start to navigate the internal um, systems of who you are, of how you are, of what you are. And as you reach out to usually to, to do something about your pain, it requires you to do something different. And that something different is usually something positive. Okay, so this is where the positive power of pain for me is such a magnificent system that we have within us. And I promise you that you have the answers. You have the answers inside you to your pain. If you're working with pain level one to seven, you have the answers. And you have the answers that can stop you moving into trauma. Now, if you've had a lot of trauma, then the, what we want to do, what I've done for myself and what I do with my clients is we quieten down. You can quieten down systems in your body. You need to use particular techniques. And what one person does will be different to what another person needs to do. Some people need to start that quietening down from looking at how they think. Some people need to start that quietening down by realigning literally the way their feet stand on the ground. Some people need to start that quietening down by shifting the, uh, well, changing what they're eating or getting good levels of, of supplements back into their, their system. Some people need to start that quietening down by literally reaching out, making a phone call and saying, I need help. And that is the voice of your pain. That is the positive power. I need help. I am allowed help. I want to get help. I've had enough. So when is enough enough of your negative pattern, your negative pain, the holding in the pain, the pretending the pain's not there, the, the just, just completely zoning out to pain? Maybe make a list right now of how you try to ignore your pain. And when you make that list, you could just maybe try and think of three ways you ignore your pain. And then next to that, how about writing down, how does that work for you? How does that uh, particular method of ignoring your pain work? Does it create positivity in your life? Or does it create more of the same? Just maybe it looks different. And this is curious. And if actually your ways of not feeling work for you, then, then that's okay for now. It may change, it may not. But if it's not working for you, if what you've been doing, if the reason you're listening to this right now is because you need to find some positive power in your pain, you need to do things differently, then I have methods that I've used. And obviously, there are many different ways of, of addressing your pain conditions. And I believe we are attracted to the right person at the right time. We're all on this pain journey, this inner pain journey, and it's our guidance system, our inner guidance system. And when you release that pain or you listen to those voices of that pain, I believe it only ever feels good, even when you might feel utterly broken. If you feel utterly broken, because you are connecting with your pain, you are in the process of releasing and healing that brokenness. And that is really why I want to create a podcast called The Positive Power of Pain. Because I know for one, both from my own experience, and I have a lot, I, I, I have a portfolio of pain experiences. And I believe that the positive power of that is it makes me very good at what I do. I can hold space for people in pain. I can see people in pain without it triggering me so that I don't want to 
be with it anymore. And this is very, very important as a practitioner. Okay, so overall, the positive power of your pain is present. And it's how we can harness that for you today, uh, even in small, incy, bincy, incy, bitsy steps at times, because you may be so challenged that the thought of doing anything might seem too much. If that is the case, then always my first thing is um, active rest. And I have a process called the 10 minute fix, and that's my gift to you. So I will put the details of how you can access that. And it will enable you to immediately feel supported on the ground, connect with your breath, and in turn, connect with your body. So if you're in physical pain today, you will be able to support and, and explore and release and relax that area of your body. If you're in emotional pain today, you probably need support. So the first thing you can do is you can get down on the ground. And when your nervous system feels the support of your ground, the ground and you start to breathe in a particular way, then your nervous system moves from feeling in life threat or fight or flight. It moves into a space where you can begin to think about things and process things slightly differently and that is when you can start to access the positive power of your pain so do go and uh, try that that process and you can get in touch and find out about other courses uh, that you can do so another course that I have is the get into your body course and this is where we're really interested in looking at physical pain you feel in your body and looking at the structural alignment of your body. You know, how do your feet connect with the ground? How do your feet connect with and support all the weight of your body going down through them? And get into your body is an, um, uh, just such a special course because you get to learn about you and access what causes a lot of your pain. And we teach you to understand that, understand how your body works, how it's meant to move. And as you access the cause, very often, simply by using movement to access it, that very movement can start to treat it. So the voice of your pain from that place brings us to focus on that area. And then you can do something different. And you, as well as learning something, very often a byproduct is reducing pain levels. Another um, course that I have created is the Ixchel System DNA Pain R Relief course. And that is because I believe from my own experience and those of many of my clients, that a lot of our pain is caused by our interactions with our environment, with our family, or with other relationships we have, whether it's in the workplace or in our community. And so part of it is that, that, that what we are absorbing and what we are holding in our body. And part of it, as I said earlier, is what we actually inherit through our DNA and our genetics. And then when we put that together, negative things that you may have inherited or things that are going on in your life, and we look at are those experiences that you're having aligned with your truth and values of who you truly are today? And if they're not aligned and you, you feel out of kilter with what you really believe, what you know to be true, then this can create a lot of discomfort. And that slight out of alignment is another voice of your pain. And it's very positive to get the distinction between these two areas are you living in your truth? Are you living in a world where you feel aligned and that you resonate well with everything going on around you? Or are there things that feel completely out of alignment because of patterns and characteristics that you've either inherited or created to survive, uh, which is ultimately what we are all trying to do? 
But the eggshell DNA pain relief system is there to help you move from surviving to thriving. And the, what, we, what I do is I teach you to journey in and connect with things in your history. It may be a calling from your soul. It could be literally what you've genetically inherited uh, and in your DNA. And we go in and we connect with those patterns that might feel disturbing or painful, keep you trapped in fear or anger or grief whatever it may be and we move it we move you from the darkness of ne of negative pain to the positivity of um of positive pain because we bring in the light to that situation and you have the ability to start transforming it and i talk you through that so that is another course which is brilliant at helping you connect with the voice of your pain and actually in that course we are forever scoring scoring uh, your pain out of 10 so you learn to do that so these are a few things um, that I am just fascinated with how again and again they help people connect with the voice of their pain and turn that pain find the positivity by using the power of it to to listen to tune in to align and to release and then your life begins to transform and there may be some things where you will always have a level of pain we are living in a human body and things that are human have have um they are not perfect what can we say they are not perfect however what we're looking for is to be perfectly imperfect and the positive power of pain is gonna help you to find that and i will be back uh, week after week with more tales from other people as well as my own experiences of how we can turn something that has been nothing but discomfort into a learning breathing and growing uh, experience that brings positivity to your life and i promise you if you do that and bring positivity to your life other people will notice and they will feed off it and they will benefit as well as you so I'll be back next week uh, with another episode of the power of the positive power of pain. And in the meantime, do what I suggested earlier, go and make a little list of maybe pain that you've had and that you instead of listening to it, you've tried to pretend it's not there. Make that list and try and see how did it help you? And if it didn't help you and you're looking to do something different, then know that there are processes you can do right now today, starting with the 10 minute fix. And um, yeah, you're on your journey and it's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to be here with you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this today. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>